accounts of the justice of the Muslims. It didn't matter who you were or from what part of society where you were. You were all under the same law. This is an idea that they have in the West. And I remember a friend of mine recently, he gave me, not quite, actually quite a long time ago, he phoned me up and Dick Cheney, Dick Cheney who is one of the most important people in America, very close to the parent, maybe he's even the vice president, I'm not quite sure. You may know that, that he was recently taken to courts for corruption. So my friend phoned me up, he said, have you heard the news? You see these Americans? That Dick Cheney, he's now in court for corruption. And this brother, he's a friend of mine, he's from, he's from Dubai. I said, yes, isn't that amazing? I wonder, my brother, do you have anything like that in Dubai where one of your princes or one of your leaders committed an act of corruption and he would stand in front of the court like that? And then he got embarrassed. Then he got embarrassed and he didn't say anything. You see, brothers and sisters, if you really want to know why, if you really want to know why and you want to see why, Allah has given these people power in the land and the power has gone from us is because these are the principles they live by. They may have many bad qualities, but still by and large, although I think it is changing, but still by and large, they have this concept of justice and justice for all. But look at us, look at the Muslims, look at our lands, look at the way we treat each other. We can't even talk about each other. We can't even criticize each other in a just way. We find this one from this group is criticizing that one from that group. Even though there is a man in his own group or his own sect who is doing something worse, but he doesn't criticize him. Just because he's in another group, he'll criticize him. Oh, you see him? He's doing this and doing that. But the one in his own group, he turns a blind eye. Is this justice? Is this justice? Or even he will lie against this person, or slander this person, or invent stories about this person. Is this justice? We can't even deal with justice amongst each other. And these are the so-called Islamic groups. How about the ordinary people? And we wonder why we are in such a state. If these are the things that we mean by democracy, that's not democracy. That's Islam. And that's what our religion taught us 1,400 years ago. These things are our inheritance, which we have to claim. And if we look at the kuffar, and we can benefit, and we can see what they are doing, and the way they are doing it, and we feel that this is something that we can benefit from, then alhamdulillah, there is no problem with that. But we don't, and we should never feel that we have to compromise our religion. We should never feel that we have to give up our deen. We never feel, we should never feel that we have to change our whole religion in order to accommodate some ideology that to tell you the truth, brothers and sisters, to tell you the real truth, democracy is falling apart. In many, many countries, you will find that democracy is failing. In fact, they are subtly, bit by bit, giving up on democracy. In fact, my personal belief is that there is no such thing as democracy anyway. It doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. What they have in the West, actually, in my opinion, is the illusion of democracy. It's the illusion of democracy. They make people think and believe that they have a choice, that they can influence things, but in reality, they can't change anything. The people who control the world are the same people who have always controlled the world. They are the big businesses, they are the multinational corporations, they are those few elite people who have the power and the money in their control, and the world runs according to the principles they want. They don't care whether you have girlfriends or boyfriends, whether you're a homosexual, whether you drink alcohol or take drugs. In fact, you know what, they like that. Because the more you follow that corruption, the more miserable your life will become, and the more miserable your life becomes, the more you need to fill your life with fashion, with film, with drink, with music, and with all the consumer things that they want you to say, look, buy this, buy that, have this, have that, that's the way to be happy. 
miserable people consume. So actually it's for their benefit to create a society like that, so they imagine. So I'm not really sure anyway that the so-called democracies even have democracy. And one of, the, one of the things that highlights that for me is that in England recently, not only in England, but in Italy and all over Europe, they had massive demonstrations against the war in Iraq. In England, we had 2.5 million people gather together to protest this war. In Italy, it was five or six million. This is the biggest demonstrations there have ever been in history in Europe that we know about. They found through polls that the, the majority, and in some cases, the large majority of the population opposed this action. But they still went ahead and fought the war. What happened to the rule of the people for the people by the people? What happened to the people deciding what we should do and what we shouldn't do? And so we find in many countries that is the case. We find in many countries that is the case. I don't know much about Indian politics, but I suspect that a very small minority actually decides what happens in this country. In America, in America, George Bush was not even democratically elected. He was appointed by the Supreme Court. In fact, he was in the process of losing the election. He was in the process of losing it, and they stopped the counts, as it's very famous, what happened in, in Florida. And in fact, they manipulated the vote so that George Bush should win. What sort of democracy is this? So this is what we really find, that the famous saying goes, democracy is hypocrisy. And the reality is, when we look at these so-called, many of these so-called democratic countries, what do we find? Exactly that, hypocrisy. And I look forward to the day when Muslims will stop apologizing, stop being so apologetic, realize that they have the most beautiful deen that doesn't need any changing, it doesn't need adjusting. All we need to do is recapture the true spirit of Islam as it was practiced by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then once again, again, brothers and sisters, once again, we will be a shining light and a guide for humanity to follow. But this is going to happen. This is only going to happen when you change your life when you and me brothers and sisters when we implement Allah's law in our life when we implement Allah's Sharia in our life when we obey Allah when we display the characteristics of gentleness and kindness and love and compassion and justice yet at the same time firmness upon obedience to Allah we will see that when we have established the Islamic State in our hearts, Allah will establish the Islamic State on the earth. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Islam It makes you fair and kind and helpful to your fellow men. So living as a Muslim means that you must play a part. Allah looks not at how you look, but what is in your heart.